Just remember how Brock Purdy got about $800,000 in performance-based pay that we were confused about? Well, it turns out that if you play four snaps, have zero completions, you get $81 in oh. performance-based pay. All right. Does that seem like way too much or way too little? Way too much. much. It seems like way too much for a guy who made $36 million last year yes. and played four plays. So I did a little research into this. Oh. So they, the way they set this up is every single player in the league gets something. Everyone. Apparently. So Aaron Rodgers got the least amount, which makes the most sense because he made $36 million right. yeah. and only played four snaps. And the fact that you even sent him a check for $80, which he wipes his tushy with, is ridiculous, right? The guy that got the most money is also now a New York Jet. Yeah, was, yeah. Our new uh, starting guard, Mr. Simpson, who got just under a million dollars based on what his pay was in Baltimore. But this is, look, I think there are some guys, Brock Purdy's one of them, who clearly outplay their contract. But too bad. Like, why are we, and I don't want to be a bad guy about it. You're about to be. I'm going to be. Yeah, I don't yeah, mean yeah. to be. This might be the dumbest thing I've ever come across from a fan standpoint. Because the lowest paid guy in the league is still making about a million dollars, sure. okay? Which is more money than 99.9% .9 of the population makes. And yes, you guys have a skill that 99.9% .9 of the population doesn't have. I never except begrudge the money. Line, except line. But we're setting no, aside $300, $400 million to reward you guys for outperforming a contract. And yet a guy making $36 million bucks also gets a little piece of the pie. I know it's not, it's 80 bucks, it means nothing, right? But you've got some balls, uh -oh. NFL. You've got some balls, number one, laying 200 people off this past year when you've got a surplus of damn near half a billion dollars. You've got some balls charging me $40 to park, $20 for a beer, $40. $10 for a hot dog, and on and on and on, then forcing me to pay money for a personal seat license when you're sitting on mounds and mounds of gold cougaron and cash. And the fact that you have $400 million to give out to multi-millionaires while well, I'm making 50 grand a year, barely scraping by, trying to watch my New York Jets play a football game is obnoxious. It's obnoxious. And I don't like it at all. No disrespect. But I don't like it one little bit. Isn't making a million dollars a year enough? We have to reward you because you played good? Yeah. No, not on my watch. Not on my watch. I don't want to be clear. I don't want the owners to have it either. I want you to make the experience for us more affordable because you I can. Agree that. Take yeah. that money, figure out a way to make beer cost less money, to make parking cost less money, and on and on and on. This is obnoxious. And the fact that we celebrate it and the fact that we publicize it, hey, great job. Brock Purdy got a $900,000 check. He made a million dollars last year. And yes, in comparison to other quarterbacks, he's grossly underpaid. I appreciate that. But he still made a million dollars. So let's, let's reward the rich by giving them more money. I say not on my watch, sir. What? Because it doesn't feel right <laughs> for me to be busting my ass to watch that product and you're just sitting out there like uh, you're, you're Randolph and Mortimer Duke just hanging out <laughs> hundreds to anybody that comes along. I'm I done. No legs. I'm done. Moving on to first and fourth. Oh, more show. I'm back. The J.J. McCarthy hype train continues Let's give him some roll. money. Yeah. The latest is that there reports Patriots director of scouting Elliot Wolf. Remember, they don't have a GM. Who? He loves McCarthy and wants what? the team to draft him at the three spot. Is there any chance the Patriots end up drafting J.J.? Yeah, I mean, McCarthy? there's a chance, but I don't believe the story. Because if that's the story, what's the guy's name? The director of Elliot Wolf. Wolf. Yeah, I would fire him if I'm Robert Kraft. <laughs> Because I, it's believable because we know McCarthy stock has risen greatly yeah. you know, throughout the pro day this entire you know, postseason. So I'm not suggesting the story is not based in fact. It probably is, right? We know that he's jumped up, right? But if I'm Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, and I've got a guy in my inner circle who's part of my decision-making team, uh, and he's telling a, a reporter what we're thinking about doing with the third pick in the draft, I fire you on the spot. Because I'm in a position where maybe I want to play the field a little bit. Maybe I want people to think one thing when I'm doing something else. Maybe I want to trade down even just to four and maybe get a bonus pick from 
Yo, uh, yo, Washington, right. not Washington, I, the Giants, the Cardinals. let's say, the Cardinals, Cardinals, whomever it might be. So th I'm not saying the reporter's even lying. I'm saying it is hard to believe that this close to the draft, that a guy that's in the decision-making process is going to tell a reporter, by the way, we're picking McCarthy. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. And if it's true, I fire the guy on the spot. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want house secrets to kind of lead the house. I get that. But it, it makes sense for the Patriots to draft. McCarthy, considering that right now the fundamental basis of what the Patriots stand for is running the ball. And let me tell you something else, Mr. Cologne. Uh, the more I think about it, if this guy, Elliot Wolf, the de facto GM for the New England Patriots, right. if he's the one telling this reporter, you, obviously you fire him. But if the reporter didn't make it up, and let's give the reporter credit that he didn't make it up because that'd be, that'd be yeah. whack, right? That means that Elliot Wolf is telling somebody, or there's someone in the room. It could be a secretary. It could be an intern. It could be the random kid who, you know, wants to be a GM one day. It could be anyone that's in that room. Someone left that room. And here's the problem with the world today, if I may just okay. go to Soapbox oh, for a second. Great. Great. Soapbox. The great. notion of keeping your mouth shut is a, is a lost tool, right? Because everybody wants to trade in information. And it makes you feel good about yourself if you've got something, a little nugget that nobody else has. And rather than just sit on that nugget, because that's the right thing to do, people feel like, I want someone to know that I know, because it makes me feel good about myself. So I'm going to tell you, hey, guess what I heard? I heard the de facto GM really wants McCarthy. I was in the room when it happened. Yeah. So that way, if it does happen, you go to the bar, then I go, I told you guys I had inside information. It's a lost art. But keep your mouth shut. Period. Stop. Another thing that happens is people will in intentionally plant that McCarthy might go at three to try to entice it's some other team to screen. trade That's up. That's all it you is. You never know. Right around this time of year, you never know what's real. Listen, I tell you guys things all the time just to see which one of you guys is the loose lipped on this show. But yeah, oh, all really? the time. I test you guys all the time I, because I want to know who I can trust. And if I'm in the New England Patriots war room, I now know there's somebody in that room that I can't trust. So now I would test you. I would make up a ridiculous story about, you know what? We really like Penix. That's really the guy. To see how it gets out there. And then I know who I can't trust. But, but this happens year after year. There's always a GM or some inner, somebody in the inner circle. That yeah, his name is leaks. usually Harry Roseman. Well, yeah, that's yeah, the guy with that. He's got the loosest lips in the NFL, that guy. Moving on to our second in football that involves the second pick in the draft. These are the odds of where the commanders are going to pick and who. Jaden Daniels has risen. McCarthy has risen, but the latest is that Drake May has solidified himself as what we think will be, or Vegas thinks will be the second pick. We thought it was going to be this way all along. Yeah. Are you surprised that this is the way it's shaken out? No, it, it, the only surprise, I think, is that in the last couple of weeks, it seems like the only name we've heard a lot about uh, has been a J.J. McCarthy, and then, of course, uh, you know, the penis uh, elbow thing with uh, Daniels <laughs> out of LSU. Uh, and that was more because of that picture. You know, with the penis on the elbow and all that. Right. Uh, like, Drake May hasn't even been a story. Nope. Uh, but you're right. You know, if you go back two months, it seemed like the uh, prevailing wisdom at the time was uh, Caleb won, Drake May too. Caleb won, Drake May too. So, again, this would not surprise me because it's really kind of chalk from where we started the offseason, the college offseason, that they'd go 1-2. Uh, but you can't account for the meteoric rise of J.J. McCarthy. Look. Uh, I think Caleb's a generational talent. I'll put him to the side here. I think these guys have the potential maybe to be really good, but I don't view any of the other guys as a locked generational franchise quarterback. The way I personally view Caleb Williams, having watched a lot of these guys play, I'm not going to claim I watched every sure. you know, North Carolina game. I didn't. Uh, but, you know, Drake May has the body. He's got the arm. He brings all the things you want, right? And the, well, listen, the, the issue with... For me, he gives me Tr Mitchell Trubisky vibes. I don't know okay. about anybody else. I, when oh. I see him, I see Mitchell Trubisky. Overall, yes, does he have the size? He's athletic, big arm and all that. But he's not fundam fundamentally sound. If you're the Patriots at the three spot right now, and if you want him, understand that you will be sitting him. So let me ask you this question. Him, uh, How much do you put into, like, if you're a GM, where a kid plays, right? Now you have a guy like Josh Allen playing in Wyoming, right? He wasn't playing in the SEC, and obviously he's a great NFL quarterback. How do you value or devalue the fact that when you play in North Carolina, you're not playing Alabama and Georgia and LSU and on and on and on every single week? 
Well, for me, it's competition. Uh, it start, like People won't talk about J.J. Well, he played in a run-first offense. Yeah, but he made the throws. He was money good on third down. In the national championship, he was spot on. So, for me, Valley Drake may you talk about the injuries, everything he's been through. He doesn't throw, throw through tight windows. He throw through big – you can make the throws he was making out yeah, there. So, I don't, I, don't, I don't really value – I think he's being valued at a very – I don't know what, whatever you say, but um, I, I think it is it is what it is. I think it's, he's going to be a risk. He's I'll not tell you what, right as a Jet fan, it's so nice being able to sit in the in the catbird seat, knowing that I don't need a quarterback. Mm -hmm. It's such a good feeling for me because normally, normally I'm like, gosh darn it, I need a quarterback, and I'm worried about getting a quarterback. It's so nice to sit back and go. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I don't need is a quarterback right now. It makes me feel pretty good about myself. We're going to third in football. Another team doesn't need a quarterback are the Kansas City Chiefs. However, they do yeah. think they need an upgrade at their stadium and facility, so they put out a vote. A little sales tax to raise some money for that and for the Royals. And the people of Kansas City resoundingly voted against that extra tax for the yeah. sports teams. It just shows you. There is some reports that there could not be a, a meeting of the minds between the Chiefs and the city itself. How is this happening after back-to-back -back Super Bowl? Yeah, it's funny. It shows you as much as the Kansas City uh, sports fan is a really good fan base, right? And they've been blessed with, you know, all these Super Bowls in the last four or five years. It also shows you, get your hands out of my pockets, right? I don't want to be taxed when I have a multi-billionaire who owns the team, who's never worked a day in his life because he inherited the team, now telling me I got to pay more. When you're the guy that refused to even uh, upgrade the locker room after the last Super Bowl and were voted the worst owner amongst the players in the entire NFL. So there's a sales tax, as you described. It's three-eighths of a penny. All right, and it, it has existed prior. It went away. They want to bring it back, and they want to bring it back to do two things. They want to build a brand new stadium for the Kansas City Royals, and they want to renovate Arrowhead Stadium. So here's what's interesting about that. The Royals owner, who does not have the same net worth as the Hunt family, said that he would put in personal money, a billion dollars, to uh, defray the cost to the public to build a brand new baseball stadium, okay? Kansas City, the Hunt family, came out and said, we'll put up 300 million. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to that again. They're worth more money, they make more money, and they want to put up a third of what the Royals owner's willing to do. And the Royals get 81 games at home, the Chiefs get eight or nine, depending on you know, each year's schedule with the extra home game, right? But this shows you, as much as we all love our sports team, and it is a part of the public trust, we have gotten to a stage now where we're not paying for billionaires to get what they want. Because if you give the Hunt family the money, the public money, and it comes out of my pocket, what do I get in return? Higher ticket prices, more expensive beer, yep. more expensive parking, and on and on and on. You are worth minimum $8 billion as the owner just of the Kansas City Chiefs taking all other business interests out of it. It is obnoxious to ask a blue-collar Midwest town to now foot the bill so that you personally can make even more money with no concessions coming back my way in the form of that sales tax. And it tells you this. The people of Kansas City have spoken. They're not down with it. And as a result, it's not going to happen tomorrow when these leases end and when they have to ultimately make a decision. There are other cities and other states that will try to woo the Kansas City Chiefs. I know it's less interesting to people, but the Kansas City Royals as well, out of Kansas City. That is now on the table that you could lose your football team. And what an embarrassment that would be. <laughs> yeah, that, that's tough, man. But I, I think it was the people that suffered the most of the businesses around the stadium, right? Because they look for that revenue. So if the Chiefs were to leave, you, yep. you put a dent right in the middle. But of listen, it's simple. Put up your own money. Put it up. Yeah, you got it. You make all the money, put the money up. It's $800 million to renovate Arrowhead. I don't know where they came up with that number. Right. Don't ask me to pay for it because I get nothing out of it. You pay for it because you own the team, right? It's and fair. it's very obnoxious when owners decide we want the public to put up the money so that we can make more money and the public really gets nothing out of it. And I know the threat's going to be, well, are you willing to lose the Chiefs? No. Put up the money. You got the money. Put it up. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.